Welcome back to the line. Last week, Vanessa Alarid, a longtime lobbyist in Santa Fe, told the Santa Fe New Mexican that former state lawmaker Tomas Garcia touched her inappropriately and asked her for sex in exchange for his vote. Mr. Garcia denied the allegations. We spoke recently on the line about sexual harassment in the Roundhouse. And Giovanna, uh, it's a sort of an interesting opening question here, but, you know, does one believe the allegations right off the top? And then where do we go from there? Do, so right off the top, do you believe what's been proposed here? I mean, she went on national television. You'd have to think. Um, so I, I don't ever question that from mm -hmm. women. I mean, I just, there are so many of these cases and um, right. <clears throat> it's my view that we have to believe women mm -hmm. and the stories that they're telling. It's not exactly easy to come out and do that right. um, at any level, whether it's to the New York Times or, you know, to the leadership in the, in the House or the Senate or wherever you're going to report this. Mm -hmm. So when women do come forward, I think we have to, <clears throat> take them for you know take them for their word mm -hmm. and, and believe what they're saying mm -hmm. we shoot across the table the same question it's it's a, you know you've done some work up there too and Dan will talk about this I've worked up there as well but you know it would seem logical and appropriate to just believe what's happening here would you agree with that just when someone makes an accusation like that it can't be a, it's not a trivial thing right I mean I, I think in this case it's it's absolutely believable um, mm. I, I don't think there's any credibility issues there um, yeah, and it's and it's really sad. I think she's very brave to come forward. And I mean, the story for she actually spoke to the New York Times before she spoke right. to the local papers, and that was That's a right. part of you know a larger series that they've been working on, and, and mm -hmm. all levels, multiple levels of, of industry. Mm -hmm. But I think it was an important one because it was so explicit. It was so explicit as to a particular vote, and I think that um, there's just a really uh, disgusting aspect to that that somebody mm -hmm. would be um, that blatant about trading a vote for sex in that way. Um, and so, you know, that's sort of the part that was shocking to me that somebody would be that um, blatant about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, and there's a lot, you know, as I've said before in the show, there's a lot that goes on up there. It doesn't happen from, not everybody, you know, I don't, I don't want to paint with a broad brush and say every, every man up there or woman up sure. there is engaged in activity, but there's so much of that that goes on. And some of it is, is more subtle than other situations. Um, but this one was just so explicit that it was shocking. Right, exactly right. Steve, your initial thoughts when you saw Ms. Ellery's uh, story. Well, I, I, I guess I would echo the thoughts of my panelists. Uh, um, she was very brave to come forward. Um, and she named names. Now, a lot of, some women come forward and they don't want to name names because they're going to be attacked. Right. Their history is going to be gone into. So mm -hmm. she was brave to do that. Mm -hmm. I had the chance to talk to Mo Maestas, who's Representative Maestas, who's uh, the husband. Mm -hmm. And he of told Ellery, me, yeah. uh, yes, of mm -hmm. Allery. Mm -hmm. And he told me that she didn't come forward before because there was no avenue with which to come forward. Right. And if and so I went back and I actually looked into it a little bit. And the only place she could file a sexual harassment charge was was with the Legislative Council Service. Uh -huh. But they have no ability to have a hearing, to have an adjudication, right. to issue sanctions, to do anything. Uh -huh. So you know. <clears throat> Ten years ago, when, around when this happened, there, there was no reason to come forward. Right. He told me that she did come forward because of the current uh, events, because the Me Too thing that, that Laura has kind of referred to. Mm -hmm. And he also told me that, there, that he is going to work on legislation ah. to provide an avenue so that women can, men too, people can come forward if they've been sexually harassed. Right. Good point. I'm glad you did that. That's an interesting point. Dan, you know, you spent your time up there, of course, and there's something about the legislative session up there. It's not just the stuff that happens during, on the clock, so to speak, inside the roundhouse, but the culture sort of continues after hours. A lot of drinking, a lot of places, infamous places around the roundhouse, which just when people go to have unwind, all that kind of thing. Is there something about the culture that, that, that supports this kind of thing? You know, what, from your point of view, what, what's going on up there? Because <clears throat> you hear a lot of stories about a lot of different things over the years, and probably like Steve mentioned, no one reports it because there's no avenue to do these things. So, Yeah, I think mm -hmm. part of the problem is, and I, I think it's changing, but I think part of the problem when I was there was it's just a big fraternity. Right. Um, That's a, a know, good word for it. It's yeah. really like, a, like a, a gathering of a fraternity house. Um, you know, I... I, I sickened by what happened to Vanessa. I've known Vanessa for 25 years and right. she's a fantastic lobbyist. She's a she's a great lady, great mother, mm -hmm. very close friend. 
Um, you know, I, I, I feel bad that I wasn't there that, and she felt comfortable enough to say something to me, and I apologize for that. Right. Um, because no one should feel this way. I mean, I have a daughter and a wife, and you know, you, you should not feel threatened to do your job. And more importantly, you shouldn't feel threatened to take corrective action when something is done wrong to you. Mm -hmm. I think this legislative stance of saying we're not going to have any transparency about what's going on is a real problem. Right. Um, and I hope the citizens of New Mexico will speak out against this because I think that, you know, just like we've seen in Congress, you know, when you're using taxpayer money, um, I, I, I don't agree that there's nothing that c can be done. You do, go, you do are fortunate enough to get to go to legislative council mm -hmm. and tell them your problem and then go before a bunch of legislators right. and let them hear your problem about their fellow legislator. Right. I'm not sure that's the best avenue. Uh, for for doing this, but you know when I was there, it, it, there was a lot of problems. There was there was a lot of complaints. There was a lot of uh, conversations. When I was in leadership. You're part of the team that actually has to hear this stuff. Oh, wow. um, I was amazed at how the cavalier attitude of some legislators about yeah, that's that's yeah, I said that or yeah, I did that. And, wow. And so you know, I, I just I think it's sad that. The state capital, which, by the way, we're the only state with a citizen legislature, right. is not safe for all citizens. Right. And I think that's, you know, I, I do, com I do applaud, uh, you know, Nate Gentry and Peter Worth in the House and the Senate and, and Brian Egoff. I do believe that when this stuff has come to the forefront recently, I don't believe they've wasted any time. Mm -hmm. I believe that they are working together to figure out a way to fix this. And, and I, you know, I trust. I trust those guys. I think the Peter Worths and the Brian Egoffs and, mm -hmm. and, and Nate Gentrys, I think that they're going to work collectively mm -hmm. um, with, with the, the, the women in the legislature and the men in the legislature to come up with, with a process that I think hopefully... This, this lap, this coming session, you're Oh, saying. I, think, I yeah. think something will happen, yeah. both internally and externally. Okay. Laura, what do you think? Well, I mean, I hope that something does happen. I think it's, it, it'll be challenging because it is a 30-day session right. and it's not, um, you know, doing something official would have to be part of the call. There's, you know, some administrative process issues there but mm -hmm. you know certainly it's a topic for discussion and I'm glad that it is but one of the things to keep in mind is when it comes to you know Vanessa's particular situation or any of these allegations that come out that have come out recently it's about power I mean so we're yeah. talking about a situation where um, somebody in a position of power is exerting you know essentially trading on that power that's right. ex extorting sex for it right. and um, and that's the real problem here I mean even if we do have a process which you know, I guess there has been a process or an avenue to report something to legislative council services or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, people often don't take, don't yeah, Those women, are confidential, so they won't even right. disclose right. What, those, what happened or what the complaint was. But even if they do, yeah. uh, you know, I think there's a reluctance on the part of yeah. the uh, of the woman to say anything about it because there is such a high cost in terms of um, just trust issues and, That's right. you know, all of a sudden their behavior is called into question and, you know, I think there's just, it's a very complicated issue and at the legislature, especially in Vanessa's case or anybody who's a lobbyist that works there, um, you know, you don't want to sort of be that, that person that right. suddenly, you know, you don't know if you're going to be blamed for all activity and people are suddenly going to shun you for for having said something, and so I think that kind of culture needs to change. I've always felt like the, the part of the problem is that short time of the session. It, uh, sorry, since we don't have a full-time legislature, you, you know what I mean. You can you can kind of dally around no. and pull. You know, no, you're, no? You're, okay. you're either a good human being, 24 hours oh, a day, seven days a week, you're not. There you go. There and you go. and at the end of the day, uh -huh. you know, I I, I appreciate Laura saying they don't need laws. We have plenty of laws. On the books, they can they can bring in rules and regulations to govern themselves, which they have the right to do. That could bring swift retribution to people that are involved in this, and they can do things like you know, right now the legislative council you file a complaint and a bunch of people go behind a closed door and they decide if their colleague is guilty. Right. How about you know? How about making those complaints public? Because you know what, I think if you made a complaint against me, I I would like the opportunity to prove myself innocent right. and come back out and say, look, it, it didn't happen. That's right. Um, and so I think at the end of the day, you know, there's a lot that can be done. It doesn't require the signing of bills mm -hmm. if they have the wherewithal and the desire to regulate themselves. And that's going to be the million dollar question. But I do think, mm -hmm. you know, having served with most of these folks and people like Peter Worth and Nate Gentry, I, I think Brian Egoff, I don't think this is something that's just going to go away. They're getting in front of it, exactly. Let me swing to something um, It's part of this we can't ignore. Uh, uh, Vanessa, uh, Vanessa, I'm sorry, uh, Giovanna, is the uh, Michael Padilla situation. Mm -hmm. And the fact that as we sit here taping this, you know, there could be a decision from uh, Democratic leadership about whether he keeps his majority whip seat or not. And we're sort of watching and not really feeling anything quite yet, but your sense of that situation, is Mr. Padilla, 
should he take the, the right road and just sort of walk from that position, save everyone some time here, or is it is inevitable? Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think that we'll, we'll find out very soon that he probably isn't in a leadership position. Right. And, and I think that's okay, you know, considering uh, everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. I do want to say, though, that there is a culture of sexism uh, at the at the legislature right. I mean it's just there you right. know and the the story you know that came out with Vanessa and and all of that was that was very specific and mm -hmm. that was um, as as other folks on the panel said it was very um, specific vote trading you know for sex mm -hmm. a lot of the other stuff that goes on up there is way more subtle a lot more subtle and I've I've been a, a part of 20 I think legislative sessions at this point mm -hmm. either as a lobbyist or um, or a staffer actually mm -hmm. to begin with I was like in in the Senate staff so I have seen a lot of this stuff and um, it, it is very subtle and it's it, it's hard to just say oh we, we just need you know women to come and speak up and and you know we'll make it all better mm -hmm. there are some bad apples in the in the legislature right not really right. no I think it's more pervasive than that and I think it's gonna take a really looking at the systems and and the systems that support sexism and the uh, it, just the whole thing um, needs to be looked at in a comprehensive way right. instead of just pointing fingers and and saying oh we dealt with it because we've put some rules in place you know mm -hmm. um, I mm -hmm. think we we need a longer view of this that's a good point there we'll leave it there now when we come back to the line, we'll discuss the current candidates in the lieutenant governor's race in 2018. Now we've all heard that New Mexico is losing young people, especially those who studied in the STEM fields. That would be science, technology, engineering, and math. There are many different opinions on how to address the so-called brain drain. Our producer Sarah Gustavus looks this week at an upcoming symposium that is taking a new approach.